Thank you for joining us this morning and welcome to the SBA PPP loan forgiveness webinar. This is one of our navigating your business through COVID-19 webinar series. These webinars are being recorded and will be available for review on our website approximately 24 hours after the session. Today's webinar covers the SBA portal for Paycheck Protection Program PPP borrowers to apply directly with the SBA and is presented by the SBA NC District Office. The Small Business and Technology Development Center is an SBA partner and will be providing technical assistance to applicants. I'm Bob Weston, Director of the SBTDC Statewide COVID-19 Business Recovery and Resiliency Program, a CARES Act funded initiative expanding the Small Business and Technology Development Center's capacity to assist businesses in successfully navigating the COVID-19 crisis. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Byron Hicks, Executive State Director of the SBTDC. Byron Hicks was named State Director of the Small Business and Technology Development Center in January of 2021. He also serves as the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Business and Technology Extension Programs in the Office of External Affairs, Partnerships and Economic Development at NC State University. The SBTDC is the Business and Technology Extension of the University of North Carolina system. For over 36 years, the SBTDC has been a resource for business owners, providing confidential counseling, educational programs, and a connection to university resources that helps them make their businesses better. The SBTDC operates 10 regional centers across the state that are hosted by our UNC system campuses with 16 offices serving all 100 counties in North Carolina. The Business Resiliency Counselors are now embedded with each of our regional centers to request a virtual appointment with the Business Resiliency Counselor. You can go to our website, www.sbtdc.org slash ERFC. It's my privilege to introduce Mike Ariola, Director of the US, U.S. Small Business Administration North Carolina District Office. As district director, Mike Ariola oversees an office that drives economic development by assisting local entrepreneurs with starting businesses and growing their businesses. Mike? Great. Thank you so much, Bob, for having us. And special thanks to you and Catherine, of course, for graciously hosting us on this PPP Direct Forgiveness session. Joining me here uh, with the SBA team are Karen Hoskins, our Lead Lender Relations Specialist, Patrick Rodriguez, our Senior Area Manager for the Raleigh Market, and Levi Kennard, our Economic Development Specialist, also based with me here in Charlotte. So we're gonna talk about this new portal and process that the SBA has for PPP loan borrowers to apply directly for forgiveness of their PPP loans. A couple of things. First of all, this is for loans up to and including 150,000 for which your PPP lender has actually opted into the system. Yeah, this is a very important development with the SBA because loans that are on 150,000 or less represent 93% of all outstanding PPP loans. So that's a huge universe of potential borrowers uh, that we hope to be serving with this direct forgiveness portal. Approximately six and a half million loans remain to be forgiven and many borrowers will have to begin making payments very shortly. And so it's for that reason that the SBA put together this uh, direct forgiveness portal with a great degree of urgency. In line with this forgiveness portal, uh, we've allowed, first of all, obviously the ability to get direct forgiveness, but also a COVID revenue reduction score that I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. Okay, so for lenders that choose to opt in with this direct forgiveness portal with the SBA, here's the deal. SBA is going to allow borrowers to submit their applications for both first draw as well as second draw PPP loans. So basically, you know, all the PPP, lo PPP loans that are out there can use the SBA platform. Uh, it's a single secure location for borrowers to apply for forgiveness using the electronic equivalent of the famous 3508S uh, PPP loan forgiveness form. 
The platform will notify lenders when the borrower has applied for forgiveness. And here's the very important thing. The lender will review the forgiveness application and they will issue forgiveness, the forgiveness decision to SBA. So although we are touting this as a direct forgiveness to the SBA application thing, your lender still must be involved in the process. And how they're gonna do that is after you've applied directly, SBA will ping the lender, the lender will either agree or disagree, and then you can get your forgiveness. So the borrower has to submit the forgiveness application to directly to the lender when your lender doesn't opt in. The borrower's PPP loan amount is greater than 150,000. You as the borrower do not agree with the data as provided by the SBA system of record, or you can't validate your identity in the platform or for any other reason where the platform rejects the borrower's submission. So those are the four main caveats in terms of um, when the borrower must submit their forgiveness application directly to the lender rather than ourselves. In these circumstances, the borrower has to follow the instructions for them from their lender regarding how the lender expects the borrower to submit a forgiveness application. Now I wanna talk about the COVID revenue reduction score. This, is, this applies to second draw PPP loans. And remember when we went into the second draw PPP loan process, Congress said, okay, SBA, you can permit folks to go back to the trough again, but if they're gonna get a second draw PPP loan, one of the things they have to evidence is the fact that they actually sustained economic injury. I'm gonna put it that way. And by that, we mean they had to have experienced at least a 25% reduction in revenues from year to year, from you know, one comparable quarter to the next, et cetera, of about 25%. And we said, okay, make sure that uh, be, make sure that as you apply that you can furnish the documentation to do that. Some lenders required the borrowers to submit that documentation upfront when they applied. Uh, some did not. So it wasn't actually a requirement. Sort of as a stopgap, SBA put together this COVID revenue reduction score as sort of a proxy. Uh, for documentation for borrowers to evidence that 25% reduction in uh, revenues. So what is this score about? Well, basically it calls all kind of economic data as well as business uh, reopening data. Uh, we work with Dun & Bradstreet, which is a very famous statistical research company to derive this COVID reduction score that can serve in place of you having to, to submit the documentation in some cases. Uh, to uh, on which your lender would rely for that 25% reduction in revenue. And here's the thing, SBA will score all second draw PPP loans of 150 or less, regardless of whether the lender actually opts in. So that's a very convenient tool for lenders to be able to use. Also regarding the COVID revenue reduction score, uh, I wanted to say a couple of things about that. And we wanna talk about, okay, so, when is um, the score valid to be used? And when is it not valid to be used? So there's a couple of scenarios and it all has to do with whether or not your lender has been furnished with the documentation from you as the borrower to evidence that 25% reduction, whether it's financial statements or whatever. So here's the deal. If the borrower hasn't already submitted documentation to the lender, then use of the score will satisfy that requirement for you to submit documentation for that revenue reduction. Okay, so if you haven't submitted any documentation to the lender, the lender may rely on the credit, on the COVID score, as long as that score validates the revenue reduction. And by the way, what is that score? It's either pass or fail. It's not a number. So if you get a pass score on this COVID revenue reduction and you have not submitted any documentation, then the lender may rely, and you may rely on that in satisfaction of the documentary requirements. What if you um, ha have already provided the documentation to the lender? Uh, then in that case, the lender will make for the forgiveness decision based on the documentation you've submitted. Okay, so that's a key difference there. How about if the score does not validate the borrower's revenue reduction? If the borrower has not already provided the documentation, then you need to submit that, okay? If the borrower has already provided documentation to the lender, then the lender makes forgiveness based on whatever you submitted. So there, there are four different scenarios. You know, two have to do when the COVID, with when the COVID reduction score uh, is validated, and one has to do 
with when the score uh, does not validate the borrower's revenue reduction. I think the bottom line to all of this, and I'll go to the next slide, is that documentation overrides the score. Okay, so if you've got your documentation in there, you get a pass score, but the borrowers, the lender's documentation shows otherwise, the documentation will prevail. So I hope I made that clear. Um, also, if the lender knows that the borrower is ineligible, for example, they're guilty of discriminatory hiring practices, uh, it's an illegal type of business, then the lender may not, may not approve any forgiveness at all. So that's another override situation that, that may apply. Okay, and with that, I'll go ahead and pass to Karen Hoskins. And pa Karen, if you wanna take it away and just say next slide to prompt me. Okay, thank you, Mike. And good morning, everyone. We are now gonna shift our focus and we're going to go over the Direct Forgiveness Portal User Guide. Next slide. So we're gonna break this out into basically five different categories that we're gonna go over the registration, how the application submission process works, application signing, um, then how you can watch your application as it flows through the different approval steps and other resources. Next slide. So now we're gonna jump into registration. Next slide. So the web, the actual um, link you will want to go to is https colon forward slash forward slash directforgiveness.sba.gov. That will take you directly into the picture you're looking at um, on your screen. It'll bring you right to there. Um, otherwise, if you forget that link, you can always just go to sba.gov, get into the PPP section, and then drill down to the forgiveness section. But the direct, direct link is nice. So what does, you know, again, we can't say it enough times that you have to have a PPP loan of 150000 or less, and your lender had to have opted into this um, into this program. So those are the two, two things you want to be sure before you get started to make this worth your time. And one of the very nice things of, of being able to go into this portal is that a lot of your application is going to be pre-filled. SBA, we already have a lot of information from your original application that will transfer over um, into pre-filled. And, and that is also to, to go back to what Mike mentioned, if your business maybe changed names or something changed from the way your application was originally submitted, your application may not pre-fill how, how you, you know, it should now because maybe the name has changed, that would be an example then of where you would go directly to your lender. So just to make that point. We, SBA recommends Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome as um, the two preferred browsers. However, that is recommended. You can certainly use another, uh, another browser. And you will need to complete this next phase. We're gonna cover the registration before you can actually log into the portal. Next slide. Oh, wait, before you go, I'm sorry, can you go back? So you're gonna to wanna to immediately click on that blue button for registration because that's where we're gonna go next. Thank you. Next slide. So now that you've clicked on that, you are going to get the pop-up that you see over on the um, bottom right hand of our screen. And you're gonna create your username and I like how they call it a unique username. Then you're gonna list your email address. And this email address is very, very, very important. So if you're gonna take any notes at all, please write down that whichever email address you choose to use, you cannot change that email address. You can't decide all of a sudden you don't like something about your, you know, your email, the way it looks and you wanna change it, you got to stick with that same email address. So pick one that's gonna work and one that you have access to easily. Then you're going to um, 
create your password 12 characters long sort of the same drill we're used to on these types of sites they're going to have you key it in again so you'll put your password in twice and then the four letters or numbers will appear and you'll have to decipher what those are next slide and select sign up next slide now you've selected sign up and this is when you're going to start getting emails and you're going to get a series of two and your first email is going to pretty much well first of all you want hopefully you do get that right away because you keep hope you keyed in the correct email address and it's going to direct you it's going to use have your username in the email and that's going to say click here to continue your registration so that, now you're through with that email Next, you're going to get your confirmation email and it will state your username and your email address yet again, wanting you to confirm that that's correct. And right after that, you're going to see greetings from the SBA PPP Forgiveness Fund. And after that, you know you have successfully created your username and password. Next slide. So you're back to this first page that we saw when you very first logged in. And now you will go and actually key in your username and your new password. And if you forget either of them at any time, you will see over in the far right-hand corner where you can um, click forgot password or forgot username. But hopefully that won't happen. You will click sign in. Oh, next slide. Sorry, Mike. And now you will have your last of your authentications. And this is where you need to put in your cell phone number. And this has to be um, your regular mobile cell phone. And it cannot be a voice over IP phone carrier. The reason being is you're going to get a text message immediately sent to that phone number that is going to be your security code to then key in and you are verified. Next slide. Okay, and at this point, I would like to turn it over to Patrick Rodriguez. Thank you, Karen, appreciate it. So next slide, please. So this is where you will be beginning your application for forgiveness. Uh, let's take a minute just to look at the home screen uh, that you'll see once you sign in. So you'll notice that right in the middle, you'll see a, uh, where number one is located. It'll say start new forgiveness request. And if you're brand new, this is your first time applying for your forgiveness, you'll be selecting number one, clicking on that button to start the uh, forgiveness process. The great thing about this portal is they've made it very easy, very seamless, and they even have a guided tour button, which is right next to the start new forgiveness request. So that'll walk you through the whole process uh, if you click on that button. If you've come back to your application, let's say you had to stop uh, your application and go do something, now you're coming back to it, you sign in, uh, you would not select start new forgiveness request. You would go find your previous entries, which is up at the top left, which says all requests. And you would select that button and your uh, previous entry and application would be visible and you would select that to then go back into your uh, application that you've uh, had to uh, get away from for a little while. On the top right, you'll notice that there is a email icon or letter icon that you can send a message to the SBA and also SBA will be sending messages directly to you. And that's how you can be able to check your, your uh, messages. Next to that is a little profile icon where you can uh, change your, your profile information. And then at the bottom right, you'll see need help. That is where you can look up FAQs, and tips for the application process, the submission process itself. So it's very, try to make it as seamless and easy as possible uh, to apply for forgiveness.
Next slide, please. So once you start the new forgiveness request button, you'll then see the bottom screen, which is you'll be entering an EIN number for your business, or if you're a sole proprietor, you'll be entering a social security number, or if you're a, a foreign national, you'll be entering an ITIN number. You'll also be needing your SBA loan number, which I know everyone has written down, um, but if you don't, you can also select find your loan and right below that, and that'll then um, bring up uh, information on your SBA loan number. So you'll be able to find your loan number uh, using that number three button down there. Next slide, please. So this is another, uh, it'll, some of this information will be pre-populated by your lender. And that's the information there that's grayed out for, for the intent of this presentation, but you'll be seeing your information in these uh, boxes. You'll be selecting your title from the drop down menu. You'll be entering your first and last name. And on number three down there, you'll be needing to select your NAICS code. But the great thing about this is they've made it very easy. So you'll type in a search term, let's say, janitorial or farming or uh, chiropractor, and it'll then pre-populate with a list of uh, available NAICS codes for those industries. All right, next slide, please. So this is so also some information you'll be needing to fill in. Um, if you've received additional funds as part of a PPP loan increase after initial disbursement, you'll be checking that box. That's not very common, but if so, you'll be selecting that button there. On number two, for most uh, folks that are applying for first draw forgiveness, you'll be selecting either eight or 24 weeks in that, uh, in that column. And then you'll enter your gross revenue amounts for 2019 in line three. And at the very bottom, you'll be entering your gross receipts amount for 2020. So a couple of questions you'll be answering on that screen. Next slide, please. So here you'll see this looks should look familiar if you've if you've seen the 3508S form. This is basically the questions that are on that form. So now you're just digitally uh, you know putting this information into the form and sending it to uh, the SBA and your lender. So number one, you'll enter the number of employees at time of PPP loan application. Number two, you'll enter the number of employees at time of loan forgiveness, which would be the date that you're submitting it. Now, folks, don't get confused. This is, has nothing to do with your forgiveness. So if you're concerned that if the numbers don't equal each other, you're not going to get forgiveness. This is just a data point that SBA is collecting in the loan application. So it has nothing to do with your uh, forgiveness application uh, eligibility. But you'll be putting in those numbers in, that, in those two boxes. On number three, if you or any of your affiliates have received more than $2 million in PPP loans, you'll be selecting yes or no. And then on line four, you'll be entering the amount of PPP loans or funds spent directly on payroll. On number five, you'll be uh, filling in the requested forgiveness amount, which hopefully will be the full amount of your PPP loan. And then line six and seven is demographic data that we encourage everyone to fill out so SBA can keep track of where the PPP funds uh, are going. Next slide, please. So one thing I did, I wanna point out there is that there is a forward, uh, a previous and next button at the bottom of your portal. So if you said, oh no, I forgot, I needed, uh, you know, the information I put in the last screen was, was uh, off by a couple of dollars. Uh, please do not use the browser back button. Please use the, previous button at the bottom of the screen within the application to go back and forth in your uh, application portal 
that makes it uh, easier for the, you know, for you not having to get out of the screen and keeps you in the application itself. All right, so for most folks, there will not be a need to submit documentation under $150,000. But if there is a need, uh, this is where you're going to select the type of document you're uh, uploading and then attaching it and then selecting next to go to the next screen. So it should be fairly obvious if the lender is requesting additional documentation. But at this point, you don't have to worry about it if there's uh, no documentation screen uh, shows up. Next slide. So if a documentation is needed, this is where the lender is gonna say, we need this information back from you. And this is where you'll be uploading uh, your documentation. Again, it's the same type of screen, but just a different, um, different screen slide. So you should be able to do the same thing, select the type of document, hit, hit attach, and then upload, and then go on to the next part of the application. Next slide, please. So this is where you're summarizing your application. So you're gonna review all relevant information for accuracy and once signed and submitted, edits cannot be made to the application. So you wanna triple check your application, make sure everything is filled out. And uh, this is where you'll be double checking your information. If you withdraw your request, you'll be deleting your application just to let you know that if you hit that button. Um, and again, use the previous and uh, next buttons to go back and forth in your application. Next slide, please. So once you've submitted everything and you've gone to this screen, this is gonna give you a rundown of anything that's missing in your application. So if something is missing, it's gonna show up here in this, uh, on this screen. Um, and then you'll be able to select the missing item link and that'll take you to the appropriate field and then you can fill it out and then hit the next button to continue through the process. So like I said, we've tried to make it as seamless and easy as possible. Next slide, please. And with that, I will turn it over to Levi to uh, tell you about how to uh, close out the application. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, next slide, please. So after you've put in all your information into the application portal, it's going to auto-populate the uh, 3508S. And so SBA has adopted the electronic signature, which is going to be much, much easier than having to print this form off and send it back into the SBA. So the only thing in order to uh, sign this electronically is in the upper left-hand corner, just check that box that you agree to electronically sign and then hit the continue button. Next, next slide, please. And I'm sure that most people have done this before, but all you would need to do is hit the start button and it will allow you to choose your signature and then walk you through all the places that you need to initial and to sign. Now, if everything is good at this point, I would say double check that form again, make sure that the information is absolutely correct. If it is, hit the finish button. That's going to submit your application to the lender. However, if something is incorrect on this form, don't just assume that uh, it'll get fixed later on. Do not sign the form. You're going to need to decline to sign. Next slide, please. If you do need to decline the slide, uh, decline to sign, all you're going to need to do is hit the uh, other actions button that was next to the finish button and uh, just decline to sign, put your reasons in, reasonings in there and um, submit that. Does declining to sign mean that you are not going to receive forgiveness? No. All this is going to do is put you back into the application information portal that uh, Patrick just went over uh, filling out 
so that you can correct that information and it will bring you back to this electronic signature uh, uh, page where you can sign a correct document. Next slide, please. So after you've submitted this, oh, well, if you do, uh, well, if you decline to sign, it's going to bring you to this portal. Um, give the uh, uh, system a few minutes, it says about five minutes to, um, uh, to, to correct itself. And then you will hit one of two things, either all requests, go back and choose the application that you're submitting or exit wizard and it will take you back into um, the application portal. You'll correct the information, uh, uh, electronically sign it, finish it. It will get submitted to the lender and all is good from there. Um, next slide, please. So once the application is submitted, next slide. This will be the only place that you can get information about where your application is in the process. As you, if you look down in the lower left-hand corner, it's got a, uh, the steps in the process of processing your forgiveness application, and that green dot tells you where you are. Now, uh, if there's no problems, if it goes to the lender and the lender doesn't see uh, any incongruities in the information and they accept that and they make their decision off of that uh, application's information, then it would go all the way to SBA. However, if the lender does see a discrepancy, um, then he can um, send that back to you. Now, he can that's declining the application, but does that mean that you're not going to be forgiven? No, it does not. It's just giving you a, a, another chance to get that information correct before that information is sent to SBA. Uh, next slide, please. So if they do kick the application back to you, you're going to need to, to uh, withdraw that application and to resubmit it. But as we, we already went over, this, this is a system that takes just a few minutes to fill out. It's not a big deal. And the, having the opportunity to correct that information before it's submitted to SBA is of great advantage. So uh, look at it that way. Just go through the application process again, uh, get to the electronic signature portion, sign it electronically. It gets submitted to the lender. Lender checks the information, make sure it's correct, submits it to SBA. And how do you know where you're at in the process? Come back to the portal and see where your little green dot is. Uh, next slide. So if it, the application does get submitted to SBA, they're going to make a determination. And once they make a determination, they are going to uh, send this letter to the portal for your benefit so that you can see how much it's either a full forgiveness or a par partial forgiveness, but you will have this letter and you will know um, that you did have monies forgiven. Next slide, please. Um, there are resources um, that you can take advantage of. Next slide. Um, just remember that the portal can be found at directforgiveness.sba.gov. Uh, so you can start this process as, as, soon, as, uh, as soon as you'd like. Um, if you do want to contact and, and get some support with uh, direct forgiveness. You can use the hotline, the, the number uh, shown here. And if you do have questions and you want to go to our FAQ site, you can click on the hyperlink. It'll go there. And as we went through last night, you'll see all the questions, but you need to click on the questions to get the answer. But um, it, it's pretty robust. It'll, it will likely answer any questions that you have. Um, so that concludes my portion. I'm going to hand it back to our district director uh, to start some Q&A. Sorry, you're muted, Mike. Sorry about that. Thank you so much, Levi, and thank you also, Karen and Patrick, for, uh, for your contributions to this session. I will point out, uh, in case folks are wondering, hey, um, there's a lot of information. This uh, webinar is being recorded and a copy of the slide deck will also be provided 
at the SBTDC website at sbtdc.org. Um, now, Bob, were, uh, uh, refresh my memory. Were you all going to be emailing the link to the attendees or? No, they'll have to go to the website to get yeah, that. Okay, It'll be right, in yeah. their, uh, their uh, follow-up email. Yeah. Yeah, and the, this webinar recording and all previous SBTDC webinar recordings are easy to find. Just go to sbtdc.org, click on that banner that says, you know, COVID related assistance. Then there's an icon for webinars. Click on that one, the very first one you see, give it about 24 hours, will be this session plus the slide deck. So that's coming very shortly and we've got those um, resources for you as well. Let me go ahead and I'll turn to some of the Q&A. Um, whoops, let me kind of, here we go. Um, okay, some lenders are not easy to contact. I was unable to get my request for forgiveness to my lender because I forgot who I received the loan from. There were a few lenders I spoke with, but for some reason I could not find the actual transfer. When I was, was able to figure out who I got my loan from, I was a, unable to get in touch with anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting kind of case. Um, I can tell you that we in the district office um, should be able to look up, uh, if you have a similar situation like that, you should be able, we should be able to help you look up the details of your loan. Um, our, the best number to contact us is, um, go ahead and write this down, 704-344-6565. And leave a message in case anybody is unable to answer because we're always on the phone. And let us know that you would like to be contacted to find out who your lender is. And then we'll call you back. You can give us your social, the tax ID number, and we can look up who your lender is if that ever happens again. Thank you for the question. How do we know whether or not our lender opted in? In the invite that we sent over to you, um, there, was a, there was a link uh, on the registration link for this particular session there was a link to the list of participating lenders where you can find out if your lender opted in. Um, also, you might want to write this down as well, and I'll try to have this documented somewhere, but go to www.sba.gov slash PPP. And that will take you to the PPP homepage. Scroll down a little bit and click on PPP forgiveness. Scroll down about halfway through that long page and you'll find the link to the list of lenders. Click on that and you can find out whether or not your lender has opted in. The thing is we're still um, trying to get as many lenders as possible uh, to opt in. So if your lender is not showing up as having opted in on that particular uh, page as of today, call them up and find out. Call up your business banker and find out if they intend to opt in. Uh, next question. Um, I'll go ahead and field this one to Patrick. What is the date that registration will be open? Thank you, Mike. That is today. So it's live as of uh, today. So you can go in and start your uh, PPP application for forgiveness and it should be live right now. Okay, thank you. Next question, um, I'll go ahead and flip this one to Karen. If you already have the application filled out, can you just download it? Uh, no, you will go, you will need to go directly into the portal, the directforgiveness.sba.gov to uh, complete your registration and then answer the questions um, in the portal. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it'll have, probably help you to answer your questions quicker because, you know, more quickly because you will already um, have all your answers in front of you because because the portal is, you're going to answer the same questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Next one, I'll field over to Levi. What payroll documents are needed, if any, for an owner-operated business without any employees? So uh, without any employees, and does the owner pay himself W-2? Uh, not, not clear. It just says, you know, any, an owner-operated business without any employees. Um, then he can have internally prepared it, it depends on if he's using a payroll company if so they'll have the reports available um, if not then he just needs to track the distributions from the company to himself um, so bank account uh, 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 transactions 
mostly those will the work for him, but it depends on how he's paying himself yeah. through, through what kind yeah. of. Okay, thank you, Levi. Next question, maybe Karen and I can split this question. What percentage of lenders opted into this portal? Well, we know that about 800 lenders are already signed up. 800 out of like five or 6,000, right? All right, I think lenders? it's yeah, 800 or 850. And that was as of a, a few days ago. So there could be more. Yeah, yeah. Statistic. Yeah, so 800 plus lenders out of about five or 6,000, right? Correct. Yeah, so Correct. yeah, about 15 maybe percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're still signing them up. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are another, by the way, there are a number of lenders that we know are no, that we believe are not going to be opting in because they already invested a lot of money into their systems uh, expressly for PP. So we know that there are a couple of fairly large lenders out there that, that are not going to be opting in. Um, okay. Sean de Lestard, thank you so much for your comment. Um, Lisa, if our lender did not opt in, do we need to still use the portal? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you cannot use the portal if your lender lock, uh, did not opt in. You have to go through their PPP um, process. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. Uh, I'll go to Patrick. We have submitted our first draw 2020 PPP loan forgiveness application via our lender and have not heard anything regarding the status of this first draw application. Uh, any commentary there? Well, um, one of the things that folks should know is that there is a 60 days the lender has to review the application. And then once that 60 day timeline uh, hits, they should have already submitted it to the SBA and SBA has 90 days to review it. So it could be in that window uh, of review. And if it's past that uh, timeline, uh, then contact the local office that you're closest to, and we can see, um, you know, maybe put an inquiry in for that PPP loan. Uh, it also may depend on the amount of the PPP loan. I know some loan amounts yeah. uh, of, of more than $2 million are getting greater scrutiny. So it just depends on, on maybe the amount uh, of the loan itself. Okay. Thank you. And related, uh, uh, another question from the same inquirer. Uh, I did not see our lender on the list of opt-in lenders. How would I submit an application for forgiveness? Yeah, Karen had already uh, responded to that. So if they have an opt-in, opted in, you must apply through your lender and use their systems. Uh, next question. Uh, I received my loan from Wells Fargo, but I, I did not see them listed as one of the lenders. Uh, and then, yeah, same question. Yeah, if they have adopted in, you cannot use this portal. You have to go through the lender. Uh, next question. When I applied for PPP, I applied with my EIN, but my lender sent over my SSN instead. And that's causing a delay. What should I do? And I'll throw this out to all three of you because I think each of us has handled you know, in an issue like this, right? Yeah, I would reach out to the lender. What well, What was your What were you going to say, Patrick? I agree, Karen. Um, that happened to quite a few folks where they uh, accidentally keyed in their social instead of the EIN, and uh, there is a very easy uh, process for the lender to switch it over from yeah. EIN to social or from social to EIN, depending on your case. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Sometimes it could have been the, just a matter of, of putting the dash in the wrong place. You know, in the EIN, it's the first two digits in a dash and our social security, it's, you know, three digits in a dash. So uh, that, that is, that has happened. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next question. It's, I think we've answered this, but I'm going to um, pose the question anyway. Uh, my lender told me they are working closely with the SBA in order to use this new portal. Can I use this portal now? And the request will eventually go to the lender. Or do I have to wait until my lender confirms I can use it? Sorry, you, you have to wait until the lender opts in. You cannot kind of dump the gun. Correct. Right. But thank you for the question. That's a creative question. Mm -hmm. Glad to know you're ready to submit too. That's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Next question. I didn't see my first draw lender on the opt-in page. However, I have been trying to get them via email because I don't want the time to go by. I get a response email from them stating they no longer receive email, so they provided a support link. I have gone to that several times and no response. First draw was in April. 
Um, yeah, kind of hard to answer that without knowing who the first draw lender is, but does anybody have any comment on that particular question? That's kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it just yeah. depends on uh, what lender. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with a lot of these questions that we're seeing, it, it kind of is, you know, we can only provide so much guidance. I mean, your, your loan is through the PPP lender, not through the government. So you make the application to the lender, you sign off on the promissory note that the lender has with you, then you all come to the SBA. So some of these are really technical type questions that we can't answer as a result of the difficulty to get a hold of the lender. Um, you know, I would say, you know, do your best to go to their website, you know, Google search names for whoever the lender might be, see if you can get a contact there. Mike, can I um, add a, a quick comment on that? Yeah that um, if your first draw was in April of 2020, you know, you have your, your covered period and the last day of your covered period, then you have an additional 10 months of deferment. Yeah. So uh, please check on that. You're probably in the deferment window if it was April, 2021. Um, and you're probably at the end of your deferment period if it was April, 2022. Um, but take advantage of the deferral period if it's in that uh, time frame. Um, I hate to say it, but a lot of borrowers um, are trying to jump the gun a little bit in the forgiveness application process. And uh, as the banks roll out these portals, they'll be getting emails and communication from the lender uh, shortly. And, and I wanna add something to um, off of what Patrick just said. And that is, if you haven't gotten emails and, and you're concerned, be sure you're checking your spam and your junk mail and yeah. anywhere else that these emails might have ended up that, you know, you just didn't see it right away. So that seems like a common thing, but we do tend to forget to do that. And, and one, one thing I'd like to add is that, uh, yeah, do uh, an accurate calculation on when your covered period in the 10 month um, time frame has ended uh, because regardless if the um, lender has really sent anything over to you, after 30 days, you were supposed to make a P&I payment at 60 days. If they have not received those payments, they can charge off that loan. That's going to be devastating for the forgiveness aspect. So make sure that you're pressuring that, that lender to, to get the forgiveness application in if in fact is it's coming up on that on that timeline. And one last thing, I promise. <laughs> um, sure. After the uh, after you have submitted your forgiveness application, if this is really pushing close to your time where your ten month deferment is going to be up, once the application's in, your deferment period remains. I mean, you're like in the safety zone at that point. So. Um, just to tag on to what Levi said, that, that that is really the key is getting that application in. And we realize some portals, but some lending yep. institutions haven't opened, but but they, yep. they will be. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, some of these are, are just comments. Some of these are duplicative. Um, so I'm gonna, some of them I might skip uh, over, but I'll try my best to cover everybody as best I can. Uh, one question, how do you apply for the PPP loan and where? Okay, remember y'all, PPP loans, we're no longer accepting applications for PPP. That sunsetted a number of months ago, so you cannot apply for a brand new PPP loan. However, there's lots of other SBA programs available for you in terms of financial assistance. Uh, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which is a direct loan from the government, it's not forgivable, is still available. That is for working capital purposes. You have 30 years to repay the loan at very low rates of interest. If you're interested, go to sba.gov slash EIDL, and you can get more information and initiate an application. Uh, interesting question here. Who are the large lenders that chose not to opt in? I'm reluctant to say anything because none of that is a matter of public record. And I would hate to say bank X, Y, Z, and then they change their mind and decide, oh, we're gonna opt in anyway. So the yeah. best thing to do is to continue to check that list of, of lenders that are opting in on, our, on the website that I, that I gave you, that we're gonna give you. Uh, and by all means, check with your lender yourself. 
you find out and you, you let us know if they're opting in or not. If you want them to opt in, encourage them. Say, hey, this is a great tool. It's gonna to save us all a lot of time and effort. Um, encourage your lender to opt in. Okay, so thank you for the question, Lisa. Next question, on the portal, it is still saying the platform is scheduled to publicly launch in the near future. Uh, oh, okay, well, um, I, I could have sworn I saw something, I don't know, uh, Karen, if you saw something about, um, I think it was where we were gonna um, reach out to lenders at 12 o'clock, or was I thinking of a different, I think that was probably for a different purpose. Yeah, it's um, supposed to be opening today. Yeah, I know. I, opening. Yeah, I tried to do a test test run myself yesterday, and it just would not let me. So because yeah, it wasn't yeah. open yet. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. As far as you know, it is scheduled to be open today. So I would say just check back in an hour, maybe. Um, next, I also submitted a PPP second draw, but my bank has not sent me the second draw release. They said they will send me an email from Wells Fargo. Um, sorry, I, I'm not understanding if that's a question. So maybe Jackie, if you can reiterate that later on. Um, okay. Um, my second draw was approved and I even signed the loan documents, but I never got the money. What should I do? Oh, that's not good. Folks, um, Patrick, what do you think about that one? Hmm. Um, just if you could email um, if you could look, uh, call the number that, uh, that Mike gave you earlier, and that'll put, put you in touch with the SBA rep in your area. And then we can look up the loan and see where it, where it's at. It could be fully dispersed. It could be fully canceled. Uh, there's yeah. a number of different, yeah. um, things that could have happened to it between the yeah. time you signed it and today. Yeah. The best course of action, whenever you have an issue like that is you need first number one, go back to your lender and make sure that they are aware of that. Um, you know, these folks are giving you loans, they're having you sign documents. Surely they have some kind of a contact number or an email address for you to communicate with. If you can't, contact us at the number I gave you earlier and we'll see if we can help to troubleshoot. Um, next question. Um, okay, that, okay, that was, a, I think we answered that one already. Um, okay. What payroll documents are needed for forgiveness? I, uh, Levi, do you want to take that one? So it was saying, you know, first of all, you're going to need your payroll documents. You're going to need uh, documentation showing um, uh, that you expended those monies on your other eligible uses of proceeds besides payroll. A lot of them, for instance, like the lease agreement or your mortgage interest, uh, you will have to show that those agreements were um, intact prior to uh, the February 15th um, uh, deadline. Uh, your 941s, your state tax quarterlies, um, you want to keep all of that documentation. And we, we suggest that you keep all that documentation for a period of at least five to seven years, uh, because the SBA does does have the ability to come back and audit any of these uh, loans that they choose. Um, so um, that's just a, a drop in the bucket of the of the documentation, but uh, make sure you're accumulating that uh, as of now. And keep it. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll do maybe one or two more and then we'll flip it over to Bob. Those are very, really, I was just gonna say those are very good points, Levi, to really save your, save your records, excellent. Okay, yeah, uh, good. This one, this question comes up uh, every now and then. If we received an idol the first time around, is that eligible for forgiveness? If so, what is the process for applying for that forgiveness? Yeah, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan is a direct loan for the from the government. It is not eligible for forgiveness. It never has been. Mm -hmm. That would take literally an act of Congress for them to do that. And I'm, I'm, yeah, that's something that is totally out of our hands. You must repay the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Okay, um, so, uh, I submitted a PPP second draw, but my bank, Wells for, uh, Fargo states, they will send me an email when the second draw can be forgiven. I have not received anything. Yeah, first rule of thumb there, uh, go back to your bank and follow up with them. Um, yeah, again, this is one of those issues where SBA is kind of off to the side waiting for you all to 
kind of figure things out and submit it to us, the package uh, for forgiveness. So rule of thumb is everybody, please make it a point to, you know, find out contact details for your lender. It's not SBA giving you the money. These folks are not applying. You're not applying to the bank, which is a proxy for the SBA. You are applying to the bank or, or whatever lender for a loan, signing off on their document. Um, so, I mean, there has to be some level of of contact details there for you to do that. That would be my first rule of thumb there. And at 9.59, I wanna shift over to Bob Weston. Thank you so much for hosting us. And I wanna thank you all for joining us today, Bob. Thank you. You're, you're on mute, Bob. Thank you, Mike. Are you seeing my screen now? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you all, um, Mike and uh, Levi and Patrick and Karen, uh, all you folks that are attending out there, these people have just done a great job of supporting these programs. We also um, want you to know that you can reach out to all of your SBA uh, partners, resource partners that are out there, and that includes the SBTDC. It includes all of the Women's Business Centers, and I'm missing one logo that I'll be able to put up next week on this slide. Uh, there's a fifth Women's Business Center opening this week at, uh, I'm sorry, next week at Winston-Salem State University um, and the Veterans Business Opportunity Center also out there. So you can go to the SBA website and find this, the provider that's a resource partner that's closest to you. And also we work very closely with the 58 North Carolina Community College Small Business Centers and those folks are there to assist you. So uh, feel free to reach out. We appreciate you all attending. Um, we, we do have, um, want to thank you. And th this is the site where the recording and slides will be available online. It takes about 24 hours for them to get there and you'll be able to download the, the recording and uh, as well as a copy of the slides themselves at www.sbtdc.org slash coronavirus web slash webinars .html. Easy way to get there, go to sbtdc.org. There's a big banner that says navigating your business through COVID-19 at the top of the page. Click on that, find a little button that says webinars and it should be the one at the top. Um, also to, uh, to request a virtual appointment with our um, uh, with a SBTDC counselor, you can go to sbtdc.org slash ERFC. And we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar and reach out to us anytime we can help.